Welcome back. This is the ninth episode of this beginner watercolour series. New students quite often have a number of confusions about wet on wet painting techniques and hopefully I can clear up some of those confusions through this video. Our subject today is Baby Panda and I think it's the ideal subject for demonstrating a wet on wet technique. Hi, my name is Joe Cartwright. Welcome to my studio. My aim with these videos is to help you paint better watercolours. This next series is all about the basics. If you're a beginner or have found painting with watercolours challenging, then please join in as these videos are for you. And remember, if you like what you see, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be informed of each new video I produce. Also, if you have any questions or requests, please leave them in the comment section below. Again, um, as with the rest of the paintings for this course, we're limiting the um, size to uh, 11 inches by 7.5 inches, and this is Archer's cold pressed paper that I'm using. So I'm just going to very quickly draw the panda. All right, so let's start. I'll turn this over. I'm going to start by wetting the back of the paper. And this uh, is to let, let me uh, paint for longer uh, before the, the front surface begins to dry. I'm using a bigger brush to speed this up. This is a size 24 brush. Very soon we will be finished with the, uh, the initial beginner sessions of these videos and then we'll branch out into a wider range of colours and brushes. So I'll just let that sit there for a minute while that absorbs the moisture and I'll work on mixing the colours. Now the panda is only black and white and we don't need a lot of paint but it's got to be quite strong. Now normally when I do this exercise with my more advanced class I just use neutral tint and I don't mix the colours but because I've limited the colours for this course to, to the same three colours for each session I'm going to mix a colour close to neutral tint. It's, it will, because the colours will be mixed, there'll be a certain amount of separation that, uh, that happens so that you'll see a little bit of a pinkish tinge here and there, but um, one, it can't be helped. And I th still think the painting will come out looking quite nice. So I work out about how much water I need. I might take some of that out. There we go. And we'll start adding paint. So now that I've got the water I need there, I won't be adding, um, I should not need to have to add any more water to it. I'm just, so, so started with the blue and the permanent rose and I want quite a thick mixture here, very similar to house paint and the paint you use to paint your house that sort of consistency and those two colors will give us a, a deep almost like a navy blue now I'm going to add some a little bit of the yellow which will tend to gray that initial color off anytime you mix the three primary colors together you're going to get some sort of grey, anything from very pale grey to black. Then 
that's still a bit bluish so I'm going to add some permanent rose and a little bit more yellow and then a little bit back to a little bit of blue so I'm sneaking up on this near black color that I want to produce and that's pretty good maybe just a just a little bit more yellow just a little tiny bit more yellow great and that'll do and I'm going to take some of this paint and add some water to it and this I'll use this when painting the the back part of the the panda because that's going to be slightly lighter tone but the face will use this strongest mixture here just squeeze that paint out and um, it's about ready to start and you can see the paper is still a little bit cockled here there. so that says it can absorb more moisture it's also quite warm in my studio today so I'm happy to give myself as much help as I can get. There we go. And that's pretty right. Now I'll just wet the board. some of this excess water. Normally I don't I paint wet on dry meaning I'll start painting onto the dry paper. The reason for that is if I'm painting a sky and I want some lovely white uh, parts of clouds to be preserved in that situation to create those edges you need a dry surface but here because to emulate the effect of these all this fur on the panda we want soft edges so this is one of the times when I will wet the paper first it doesn't happen often but but in this case I will however I don't want to wet all of the, the paper because the eyes are still have sharp edges on them and the claws still have sharp edges so and the nose is relatively sharp edge so I'll wet the rest of the paper except for those three areas when you do wet the paper one of the things you have to allow for is that the extra water on the surface of the paper will dilute the paint you've mixed. So if you've spent a lot of time mixing your paint to get just the right tone, you have to have mixed it a bit stronger, otherwise your finished tone is going to be a lot less than what you had anticipated. For today, I really just want to show you what, what you can do with a wet-on-wet -wet technique and how it can help you paint a subject like this um, much more easily. So I'm going to start, just get some clean water, I'm going to paint around the panda's eyes like that. Around the nose got just a little bit of paint on my brush not that it matters and it might make it a bit easier for you to see what I'm doing here so that's just so I can preserve those sharp edges now I'll get clean water and I'm going to wet the rest I have to be very careful that I don't 
in my enthusiasm, and I've been known to do it, I have to be careful I don't paint through the areas I want to keep dry. It's very hard to get rid of all the paint from my brush. a bigger a different brush that's better paper should sit dead flat. If it's um, cockled in any way, then it's not wet enough. There we go. Just making sure I don't have any areas that I've missed. Great. All right. To, to help control the amount of paint I put on the painting, I'm just going to use my size 8 brush and pick up the brush, drag the, um, the brush to the edge of the palette to take about half the paint away. Now, one of the things with wet on wet, it, a lot of it is, a, is about timing. The right consistency of paint with the right size brush, the right wetness of the paper, just the right time to get the effect. If I, for instance, if I, if I have a brush with a lot of paint and at this angle and you put a mark, see how immediately it's, it's almost taking over and that says to me the paper is too wet and it's flowing down this way a lot more than I'd like. So when you're painting a subject like this, you have to drop the angle of the board down quite significantly, almost a horizontal in this case. And then that will restrict the amount of paint that's flowing, um, or flowing down the paper. So the paint will tend to stay where it is, but then flow out from that point. And if, and if the surface is too wet, it'll just flow too much. So if, we, if I tilt this, you can see how it's very shiny surface. So I've, I'm just going to stop the recording for a minute and let that dry a little bit. Okay, so some of this shine has, has gone away. It's still a little bit shiny, but I, it's, not, it's not flowing as much as it was before. So I think I can keep painting now. So I'm going to pick up some of this paint, drag the brush through the edge of the palette to reduce the amount of paint in the brush. And now we can start. I'm painting the black here. Just dropping the paint in. When we mean dropping the paint in, we're, we're touching the tip of our paint paintbrush to the wet paper and then the paint is sucked in onto the uh, surface of the paper. So the paper is quite wet and we're just trying to get it to give us, to create the impression of fur. And I'm giving the, I'm not painting right up to the drawing edge because I want the watercolour to to flow into uh, and give us that effect and you can see it's already starting to do that here. There's a little bit more here, something like that. The ears. So this area is drying 
so it's not quite as furry, but that's that's okay. The ears aren't as furry as down here, or the fur in, in it isn't as long. So it's all about timing when with this technique. We'll paint around the eyes, I'm just dropping the paint in. And it's, it's almost just painting itself, isn't it? And then this side, take some paint out. There we are. I'll just run one or two lines in there. There. And the nose I'm kind of painted very carefully. There, that'll do. And then here it's going to be a little bit lighter at the top, so I'm going to just pick up this lighter mix because it's this is further away, right? Again, we've got a race a little bit starting to dry. Then I'll go back into the stronger paint down here. There we go. And I'm going to just darken this area down here a bit more while the paint is still quite wet, just in the middle, maybe there and here. That'll do. Now, pick up a very small amount of paint. My brush is almost dry, see how it's not bouncing back to a point. And we'll use that to just hint at the snout. We'll also lift some of this paint here. And, and that paint will flow back in in a minute, but it gives me some room to um, to work on the mouth. Just there. And here, this side of the face has a bit of a shadow on it. Same this way. And here. Yeah, I'm going to pick up some of this really dark paint. I want these ears to be a bit darker in the middle, so just drop a little bit of that. Can't paint over the whole area or else it'll just continue to uh, to expand. And this is connects up here. There we go. Now I'm just cleaning the brush and lifting some of this just to help 
control some of these edges without totally removing them. So I still want this feeling of fur. Just a, just a little slight tinting of the paper here, just to establish that edge. And I'm going to darken around this eye a bit. There we go. And the eye itself is quite dark. It's got a little highlight. Some of the fur that's gone a little bit too far out, I'll just bring back in a bit. But not too much, it's, you know, they are little fur balls after all. And this is just to give you the impression of the panda. There we go. As you can see, it's all a matter of timing. Areas where it's a little bit drier, it doesn't bleed out as much. Where it's wetter, you get a lot more bleeding. You have to allow for the paint consistency and, um, and judge just how far the paint will flow. Every time I paint one of these, I get a very different result. Um, because this is, you know, you can only judge so much. Just get rid of that little bit of extra white there. Before I leave this, I'm going to just soften the eye here. It's just, a, just that dark edge. Because it's, it's flowing. There we go. And creating a hard edge there. I don't want to dwell on it too much. So that's it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Wet on wet is a great technique for creating uh, effects like this. If you're painting a koala, you would use the same, you could use the same technique for that, even cat fur. Wet on wet's a technique that um, you have to have in your arsenal as a watercolor artist. Although it's not that common to be painting wet on wet on the whole sheet, because you can see this you end up with lots and lots of soft edges and very few hard edges in this case it's only where i've preserved them right from the start all right i hope you enjoyed that see you for the next painting if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below